I have one last thing I want to go over with market structure. And I, I, I said that I would come back to it, then I almost forgot. It's this herfindahl hirschman index. Uh, I've, I've placed it in here so that we can look and see what the math says. Now, what this is is an attempt to measure um, how large a market is. So <clears throat> think for just a second. I have given you a couple of different definitions. Uh, one of them is an industry versus a firm within an industry. Okay? So if you think about an industry, these are this is a collection of firms that produce similar things. And then I'm usually interested in the individual firms within the industry. Well, what the herfindahl hirschman index is trying to do is measure how dense the industry is. So if I think about it for just a second, maybe after I name the parts and pieces of this equation. First off, this indexing. N is the number of firms within an industry. So here I have an example of commercial airframe producers. Uh, the big producers of commercial airplanes are Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, and Embraer. Now, <clears throat> this then makes N in my hirschman herfindahl index just four. There are four of there are four firms. N is four. Okay. Now let's look at this S sub I. S sub I can be different things depending on what we're trying to measure, but we are right now using S sub I to mean total revenues for the ith firm in the industry. So over here, I went and looked up. What was the what were the total revenues in 2019 for Airbus? Well, they were 70 billion 478 million. Okay. So S sub one S sub Airbus 70 billion 478 million. All right, we upped the index by one to S sub two. Well, two is Boeing. Boeing Corporation had revenues. In 2019, of 76 billion 600 million, okay. and then we bump the index up one more to three. Three is Bombardier. Uh, Bombardier had had total revenues of 15 billion 757 million, and then finally Embraer uh, S sub I uh, S sub four. Would be five billion seventy one point one million. Okay. All right, the S down here in the denominator is just the sum. It's the sum of all of the individual firms within an industry's revenues. So the entire industry had revenues of one hundred and sixty seven billion nine hundred and six million. So that's the denominator in each of these calculations. All right, well, then what's the ratio? It's the individual firm's revenues divided by the industry revenues. So if you take this literally, which you should, it is the share of the industry revenues of the ith firm. So over here with Airbus, by the way, notice that I've moved the decimal two places so that this shows up as a percentage. And maybe I don't want so many decimals to look at. Uh, I can shorten that to. <clears throat> so Airbus, their share of the market, 41.9%. Boeing's, 45.6%. Bombardier, 9.38%. Embraer, 3.02%. Now, this should all add up to 100% which it does, okay? I mean, it has to. All right, uh, you know what? It looks like I didn't put all of the uh, parts and pieces in here. Uh, just a second, let me work on this. So I need, I need, Sorry, Microsoft is not very intuitive to me because it wants everything to come in backwards. There, 
there's the index and the calculation. Now what is this squaring doing? <clears throat> squaring is kind of unique. If I take a number that's between 0 and 1 and I square it, it actually becomes smaller. And so if I have thousands of small firms and each of them had less than a 1% market share, this index number could be pretty small. Okay? Uh, but if I only have one firm, so that the industry, so that N is 1, and so that the total industry revenues and the total firm revenues were equal, well then I would have 100% and its squared would be 10,000. So this index is going to be some number between 0 and 10,000 where 10,000 would be perfect monopoly. I don't think any of those actually exist, okay, but everything else is somewhere in between. But the squaring kind of you know, makes the separations a little more exaggerated. Okay. All right, so the index number for the commercial airframe producers is just the sum squared of each of these shares. So I have an index number of 3,940. So this industry is relatively concentrated. But if we focus on the shares, we see that it's really concentrated between Boeing and Airbus. And if you know this industry a little bit, what you know is that Bombardier and Embraer, what they do is they try to find their own little niche. So Boeing and Airbus are fighting for all commercial planes that seat 100 passengers or more. Bombardier and Embraer, they're fighting for the passenger planes that seat 100 people or less. All right, so let's look at yet another. So I have the diamond producers in the world, De Beers, uh, oop, I might have misspelled, Alarosa, Rio Tinto. Now issues. We have some real issues with some of these numbers. Maybe I'll get there in a second. But De Beers had revenues in diamonds of 4,605,000,000 in 2019. Al Rosa, 3,340,000,000. Rio Tinto, uh, 6,619,000,000. Okay, so their market shares De Beers is the largest, but uh, Alrosa, second largest. But De Beers, uh, I mean, their main their main operation South Africa, Northern Canada, Alrosa, uh, they're Russian, and Rio Tinto is worldwide. And diamonds, I think they actually mine diamonds, just because they show up in their work, right? Rio Tinto. Uh, iron ore, copper, aluminum, several other things. I mean, they're a big mining industry. And these are just the revenues from their diamonds. All right. So notice that their Herfman herfindahl index is bigger than in the commercial airframe. So what's making it bigger? Well, what's making it bigger is the two largest firms have larger market shares and there are only three firms, so N is only three. Okay. All right, problems with this measure? Yeah, there are problems with the measure, and here's the problem. Airbus doesn't just produce commercial airframes, neither does Boeing. Both of them commercial, commercial airframes, military airframe, or jets, and, uh, oh, and they produce planes also just for cargo. So so these numbers are kind of mixed up, making them maybe look a little artificially large compared to Bombardier and Embraer, uh, Canadian and Brazilian producers. So at any rate, this is our best attempt to measure uh, to measure industry concentration. Uh, things to note, you know, if there were a hundred firms each with 1% market share, well then this index number would be 100. Okay, because one added together 100 times is just 100. Okay. So, you know, 
larger number of firms, smaller market share, smaller HHI. Well, I hope that this is useful. It can be challenging to use, but I want you to know it exists because it does get used, especially in litigation contexts. Anyway, I hope this is helpful.